Hey, what's going on guys? It is Dan back again with another video. My name is Dan and I do videos on menswear and men's costume design. And in today's video, we are going to be doing the 1996 rendition of Romeo and Juliet by Baz Luhrmann. This movie has become a cult classic since its debut. This movie has an amazing cast with Leonardo DiCaprio, Claire Danes, Jamie Kennedy, John Leguizamo, and a bunch of others. So written exactly as the Shakespearean play, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet follows almost the exact same script of the original, but it is set in an ambiguous scene of somewhere between Venice Beach, Mexico City, Miami, Verona, Italy, but it's called Verona Beach. The modern adaptation takes us through a classic tragic love story of two star-crossed lovers, Romeo, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and Juliet, played by Claire Dames. The two find themselves madly in love with each other, but it is forbidden due to their family rival Although they both know this, they still try to do the unthinkable and defy their families by getting married. So basically the idea of this movie was to bring Shakespeare to the MTV generation of the 90s, which you could totally see by the vibrant colors from the outfits to the neon signs to the costumes at the Capulet party. You could definitely tell by all the setting of the movie, and I think it was done very wonderfully by Baz. So there were two main people working on the costume design of this movie. One was Catherine Martin who is an Australian costume designer and served as the production designer of Romeo and Juliet, and who is also Baz Luhrmann's wife. So serving as costume designer, she's done The Great Gatsby and of course, Romeo and Juliet. Now for the main costume designer, it was Kim Barrett, who's also an Australian costume designer. She's done movies like The Matrix, Us, Nice Guys, she was working in theater for about eight years before doing her first movie, which was Romeo and Juliet. And when you think about that, it's just amazing because she did such an excellent job. And to knock it out of the park like she did, it's very impressive in my opinion. And a cool little note is that she worked very closely with the actors to create their looks and took a lot of input from them. So the goal were to make all the looks of the movie timeless and something that could be seen in any decade. And when you watch this, I think you can definitely pick up on that because it's hard to pinpoint what decade this is. When I watched it, it, it felt new and old at the same time. So for the style of the families, Lerman had said that he wanted to make a point for the senior Montagues and Capulets to have a more 1960s, 1970s, Yves Saint Laurent, like Jackie O type look. And he had the younger generation be a conscious rejection of their families or of their parents. And you can definitely see that uh, both in Capulets and Montagues. So first off, we're gonna start with the Capulets. And for the Capulets, their looks were very sleek, sexy, and super tailored. Dolce & Gabbana actually had supplied the Capulets wardrobe with their now defunct diffusion line, D&G, some of which were actually uh, custom made pieces. The Capulets favor mostly black garments that are streamlined silhouettes, but accessorized with blinged out everything from the guns to their belt buckles to the jewelry. Abra even has a, um, a grill that says Sin on it. Now, according to Kim Barrett, their outfits were modeled after the Latin gangs for the 1990s that were in LA and Mexico City when they were running rampant everywhere. And you can definitely see that in their religious motifs on their garments. I think it definitely relates to like those Latin gangs. I really love what they did with the Capulet's wardrobe. I think it was really, really cool. I loved Abra. He's always wearing a, uh, a quilted vest and everybody basically in the Capulet family is wearing quilted vests because it's basically their bulletproof armor. Abra's either seen in like a mustard or beige quilted vest or a leather quilted vest and he's always wearing black slim denim and some flamingo boots, which I think is such a nice look. It's very sleek. Petruchio as well is seen in a maroon quilted velour or suede vest. And with that, he has like a slim black t-shirt underneath and some slim black jeans. You don't really get to see his boots. And although I'm not a huge fan of slim garments like this, like very tight fitting, I think they pulled this off very well. And of course, Tybalt played by John Leguizamo looks amazing. In the first scene, he's seen wearing D&G black mid-thigh overcoat. I'm not 100% sure on what the fabric is, but I think it's some sort of wool, I assume. 
and then under that he has this maroon quilted bulletproof vest with the Virgin Mary painted on it. Now apparently a lot of these garments were painted on by, uh, I forget if it was the costume designers or if it was just people on set or Dolce & Gabbana themselves, but both Montagues and Capulets had um, altered their garments that they had pulled from. And with the tops, he has this slim straight black pair of trousers on and these gorgeous Cuban heeled flamingo boots. They're gorgeous looking. They have this silver um, Cuban heel with that uh, that cat symbol because he is the Prince of Cats. Now for the next scene that he's in, he is seen wearing a black silk or velour gab type jacket. Um, it's either a shirt or a jacket. It, at first I, I thought it was a jacket, but then it looks very thin. It has these blouse like sleeves with a uh, zipper at the center front and then it sits right below the waist and I think it looks really nice. It's very flowy and kind of fits the beach vibe or the LA Mexico City vibe because it's obviously super hot over there so you don't want to be wearing anything very heavy. Again with the top he's wearing some slim straight dress pants and some Cuban heeled flamingo boots and I think he pulled off the look very well. And now moving on to the Montagues. So although the Montagues come from the same class as the Capulets, their outfits are a lot more dressed down, relaxed, and utilitarian. Uh, Kim Barrett actually said that she wanted the Montague boys to have a Vietnam feel from when the Vietnam War was ending in the mid-70s and the soldiers were seen wearing Hawaiian shirts and their shorts and fatigues and some indigenous hats. And obviously if you take one look at them, you understand where she's coming from or you understand where that uh, inspiration came from. She went on to explain that the soldiers adapted their clothing to suit the climate and their surroundings that they were in and the Montague boys are kind of doing the same thing. And rather be gaudy like the Capulets with their jewelry, belts, and guns, they have more of these vibrant Hawaiian shirts that are like all colors of the rainbow and they have pink hair, they have spiked up hair. Although they are seen wearing jewelry, some of them, it is definitely not as flashy as the Capulets and in general, they look a lot more relaxed, utilitarian type of a vibe. Like I said, there's so many different Hawaiian shirts, whether it be Jamie Kennedy, Samson's character with the yellow multicolored Hawaiian shirt with the Jesus motifs and the classic leaf print and him wearing his mustard workwear pants with those leather combat boots in the petrol scene, or the red cargo shorts and the uh, colorful red Chuck Taylors, or Gregory with the red Hawaiian shirt and those black palm trees and a colorful either Guadalupe or Virgin Mary, I can't really tell. Uh, he's wearing a black tank underneath with those green oversized cargo pants and some black tactical boots which is obviously a callback to what I was saying before with the Vietnam War. I mean, that just screams it in my opinion. And then you obviously have Benvolio played by Dash Mihok, Mihok with this green oversized Hawaiian shirt printed with leaves and saints, or I can't really tell, make it out that much, but he's got some sh black straight cargo pants and then some black trainers on bottom. And all the looks I think are really good and executed very well. You can definitely tell that it's a lot more relaxed and a lot more carefree than the Capulets. I think the Capulets are a lot more serious and the Montagues look a lot more playful in a good way. And then obviously you have Romeo played by Leonardo DiCaprio, who is also a rejection of not only his parents, but his like brothers um, of the Montague family. So in the first scene that you see Romeo, he is in a somewhat relaxed black suit with a widespread peak lapel and a French cuff shirt with these wide collar points. And it's definitely a step away from the Montague family because obviously he's not wearing a Hawaiian shirt and he's not as oversized, but he definitely is looking very disheveled. And the next scene we see him in, he is in this blue Hawaiian shirt with a burning heart and some sunflowers. When everybody thinks of Romeo and Juliet from Baz Luhrmann, they think of this Hawaiian shirt. I mean, it is so beautiful. And with that button up, he is wearing these black slim straight dress pants and some black dress shoes. This look might be my favorite out of all his looks because the shirt is just so classic. I mean, it just, it's the 
number one thing you think of for fashion when you think, or, or for costume design when you think of Romeo and Juliet. For the print of the blue Hawaiian shirt, it has a burning heart in the center of the shirt with roses going across the heart and then a dagger going into it which kind of is like an illusion of what's going to happen to uh, Romeo himself. So for the next outfit we see um, Romeo in, it is this blue Prada three button suit, uh, custom made from Prada. The suit is this somewhat relaxed feel, not, not too oversized, but just a nice relaxed feel. And then underneath he has a stand collared shirt, uh, white button up, with this teal tie, teal and salmon tie, and it has those salmon colored flowers, which is a nod to his Montague family, obviously. And then next up, we have this blue Hawaiian shirt that is has this multicolored floral print. Also, shout out to Friar Lawrence, who gave him this second Hawaiian shirt. And also, little side note, for wearing that sheer back button up, that was that white collared shirt with the sheer back to show off his amazing back tattoo of that Celtic cross. Thought that was sick. Anyways, back to Romeo. He is wearing the blue Hawaiian shirt that Friar Lawrence gave him, which has this gorgeous, like almost cherry blossom looking floral print with these just yummy looking colors. And he is still wearing his Prada dress pants somewhat slim, I would say, maybe a little bit relaxed. Now, last off is Mercutio who is only seen in, I think, three scenes of the movie, and I should note that he is not a Montague or a Capulet, but he does side with the Montagues, and he is Romeo's best friend. Now, Mercutio is first seen in a women's wear outfit. He is dressed in drag. I think Mercutio's character and Baz really push the MTV generation with this scene because he's wearing these, he's wearing women's clothes, and I think it pushed like the youth to wear women's clothes or maybe pushed boys to dress more flamboyant and colorful. Even the scenes after where he's wearing these sheer shirts and um, very flowy tops, I personally think that it definitely had an influence on men wearing or young men wearing women's clothes or something that's a little bit more feminine. So Mercutio, who's played by Harold Perrineau, he's seen wearing two types of white shirts in the movie, a sheer white shirt and a white pin tuck shirt, both really nice. And then on bottom, he's wearing these slim black pants. Uh, I can't really tell if they're a dress pant or just a chino. They look very flowy, so I'm assuming it's more so of a dress pant. And he does have some chains with uh, a cross and then some rings and he's definitely again like i said more flamboyant looking but still looks amazing and you can tell he's not part of either family just because of the way he dresses it's kind of neutral so as for which family dress better this is a tough one for me personally because on one hand i love the capulets the sleekness i love the religious motifs but also the utilitarian side of the montagues is something that I would probably wear more today. But with that being said, I think I gotta give it to the Capulets just because they're flashy, flamboyant. And personally, I just love that. Maybe I don't wear that as much, but there's something about the religious motifs, the sleekness, the slim silhouettes. It just, there's just something about it that, that screams to me. Either way, they're both dressed amazingly. I think Kim Barrett, Catherine Martin and Baz Luhrmann did an, a phenomenal job on the costume design and the, and the set design of this movie. It's so colorful, it's so impactful, and so that is going to conclude the costume design for the 1996 rendition of Romeo and Juliet by Baz Luhrmann. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which family you think is a better dresser. If you haven't already, subscribe, share it with a friend. Uh, my social medias are linked down below, uh, D-A-N-V-E-R-H-E-Y on Instagram. If you could give me a follow, that would be huge. Also, I've uh, linked everything down below that I researched, read, listened to, to create this video. I think you should all give it a couple looks. Uh, there's definitely some cool information in there. That is going to be it for me. Take care.